Dear students, we will start with module 4. So in, the, in this, I am going to discuss about output equation and secondly, I will recap the basics of electromagnetism. After that, factors to be considered while selecting average flux density in the air gap and ampere conductors per meter. From the main dimensions, how to separate D and L, the technique has been uh, techniques has been discussed. After after that, stator design has to be taken, and that stator design is uh, discussed. Once stator design is over, then we have to think about the air gap length. So, what are the factors affecting the length of the air gap that has been discussed? After that, there are two types of uh, rotors. One is spiral cage rotor, and another is wound rotor. So both has been discussed. Then how to calculate no load current? That has been discussed. Then some problems, how to anticipate the problems? What are the techniques to solve the problems? That has been discussed. So some of the problems has been solved, which has been, which has been asked in the previous question paper. So let us start with output equation of a three-phase induction motor. So this has been asked several times. Let D be the diameter of the stator core. L is the stator core length. Ns is the synchronous speed in RPS, revolution per second. P is number of poles. M is number of phases. Tau pole pitch, Z total number of stator conductors. T pitch, TPH, turns per phase. IZ conductors. IZ is current in each conductor. KWS, stator winding factor. EPH induced EMF per phase, IPH current per phase, Q KVA input rating of machine, B average, BAV average flux density, AC ampere conductor per meter, phi flux per pole, eta efficiency cos pi per so Consider an M phase machine having one circuit per phase, then KVA rating of machine is given by Q KV input number of phases, voltage per phase, current per phase into 10 raise to minus 3. 10 raise to minus 3 is to convert volt ampere into kilo volt ampere. So that is equal to Q, KVA input is equal to M, EPH, IPH into 10 raise to minus 3. So where EPH, VPH is equal to induced EMF per phase 4.44 F pi TPH KWS. So this, this is equation holds holds in transformer also. Same equation can be used in case of induction motor. Where F is equal to PNS divided by 2. Now for M is equal to 3 because for M is equal to 3 for 3 phase. This is 3 phase. Q K V input is equal to 3 substituted here. 3 is substituted for M and 4.4. F is substituted for here, F is equal to PNS by 2, phi TPH KWS IPH. So rearranging the equations, Q KVA input is equal to this 2 and this gets cancelled. Finally we get 1.11 KWS P pi 6 IPH TPH into NS into 10 to minus 3. So now total number of conductors is equal to Z into 6 TPH. So since here two conductors constitute 1 TPH. Two conductors constitute 1 TPH. So now 2 TPH is equal to one. Uh, this 6 TPH is equal to total number of conductors. That is 2 into 2 into 3, 3 phases and 2 pH. 2 TPH use total number of conductors per phase and if you multiply with 3, if you multiply with 3 then it will give total number of conductors for all the phases, for all the phases. That's why 6 TPH is, will give total number of conductors for all the phases. Here single, since it is single phase circuit, IZ is equal to IPH. So total electric loading is equal to IZ into Z. So 6 IPH TH. So IZ is equal to IPH here. Okay. So 6 IPH TH. 
So hence, K, Q, K, V input is equal to 1.11 kws t pi i z into z into n s into 10 raise to minus 3. But p pi, this is the total magnetic flux over the periphery, which is equal to pi d l into b average. And i z into z is equal to pi d into a c. Okay, this has been discussed in DC machines also. So substituting these values, Q K V A input 1.11 K W S pi pi D L B A V. This is substituted. This is substituted into N S into 10 raise to minus 3. So K V A Q K V A input is equal to 1.11 pi square B average A C K W S into 10 raise to minus 3 d square L N S. So finally we can write Q K V A input is equal to C naught d square L N S. So this is nothing but C naught. This is nothing but C naught. So where C naught is equal to L when if you multiply 1.11 into pi square, you will get L when L when B average A C K W S into 10 raise to minus 3. Usually induction motors are always rated in terms of uh, output power. So we should uh, uh, have output equation, uh, equation for the output. Output Q in K V A is equal to Q K V A Q in KVA multiplied by efficiency. Multiplied by efficiency. Okay. So if the output is given in terms of kilowatt, then output in kilowatt is equal to Q in KVA multiplied by efficiency multiplied by cos pi. That is VI cos pi nothing but in terms of watts. So output in kilowatt is given by C0 d square L N S. Again, where here in this case C0 is equal to 11 B average A C K W S and this efficiency into cos pi into 10 raise to minus 3 when c0 becomes this value when q is given in terms of kilowatt if the output is given in terms of kilowatt or hp then kv input can be calculated using this equation if output is in hp using this equation okay hp has to be converted into kilowatt that if you multiply hp into 0 0.746 that will become in terms of kilowatt. So we have the output Q is equal to C naught d square L N S. So d square L product the d square L is equal to Q divided by C naught S. D square L is equal to Q divided by C naught is equal to L when B, B average A C K W S eta cos efficiency this term cos pi into 10 raise to minus 3 N S. So this also proportional to Q divided by B average A C N S. Okay. So these other other things are constants. So now the volume d square L of the machine is inversely proportional to specific magnetic loading and specific electric loading and speed and speed rating of the machine. So if you choose the higher values of B average, okay, the volume of the machine machine can be, the volume of the machine can be reduced. Similarly, if you choose the uh, value of, uh, high value of AC, the volume of the machine can be reduced and size can be reduced, cost can be reduced. At the same time, uh, if if you go for higher rated, higher uh, speed rating machine, the size will become uh, low, size becoming small if there is no restriction for the speed. So let us see what are the main dimensions. Okay. So from here to here, this is the length. Okay. This is the core length. This is the L. Okay. And from here to here, it is diameter D. So this, this is the bore diameter D. Okay. Armature diameter D from here to here. This one. Okay. This is the L. So this one is stator and this one, this one is rotor. So this, whatever the gap you are finding, this is air gap length. This is air gap length. We'll recap some electromagnetism. It's a long time. So, so this is the coil. Okay. So there are n number of turns are wound on that. When you pass the current through this coil, this is winding having n number of turns. So current is passing through this uh, winding. So when current passes, when current flows, it produces the flux. It produces the flux. So this flux 
is proportional to current. This flux always proportional to current. So more the current, more the flux. More the current, more the flux. And flux density, we know that it is proportional to flux divided by area. Flux divided by area. So now when current increases, flux increases and flux density increases. So finally we can say that this flux density is directly proportional to the product I into N. This is ampere and number of tons. If number of tons also more, more flux is generated. More flux density will be there. So this uh, flux density is proportional to ampere turn. And since some of the cases this uh, turns are fixed and that is the reason that flux density is proportional to flux density is proportional to the ampere. Flux density is proportional to the ampere. So now we'll go to curve. So this is the BH curve. You can see in the y-axis it represents uh, flux density in Tesla or Weber per meter square. So from starts from zero and it goes up to 2 Weber per meter square or 2 Tesla. So then in the x-axis you can see here this is R from 0 and this is to 10,000. So this is ampere turn meter, ampere turn meter that is Ni. So this equation, this axis is Ni. Okay. So now there are two BH curves, there are three BH curves for steel and iron and air. Let us see BH curve for this steel. So now here when Ni increases, okay, ampere turn increases, the flux density increases linearly here, linearly. Okay, after that it reaches saturation, after that it reaches saturation. Okay, so now uh, you can see here at uh, flux density at 1.5 weber per meter square, the ampere turn required is only 3000, only 3000, this is the point. Okay. Now, if you want to go for higher values of um, uh, flux density, so from 1.5 to 1.55, so so that you can reduce the size of the machine, then what happens? To, uh, to have 1.55 over per meter square, the ampere turn required will be 10,000, which is very large, which is very large. Okay. So, now because it has reached the saturation region. Similarly, for iron, you can see so at 0.6 Weber per meter square, so this is the point, the ampere turn required will be around 3500, around 3500 ampere turn per second. Again, if you want to boost the flux density from 0.6 to 0.65, then you can see here, the ampere turn required is almost 10,000 ampere turn per meter. So when, when it reaches saturation, so ampere, ampere turns required will be very large, for small change in the flux density. So here it should be, the care should be taken while selecting the higher values of flux density so that any part of the magnetic circuit should not be operated in the saturation region. Okay, coming to the choice of average flux density in the air gap. So this value we can uh, select from 0.3 to 0.6 Weber per meter square. This is the range. Lower value is uh, 0.3 and uh, higher value is 0.6 Weber per meter square. So now here for induction motor, power consumed is given by P is equal to root 3 Vi cos pi. Okay, power factor is one of the design specification of the induction motor. If you take uh, induction motor in that, specification nameplate, they will mention voltage, current, power, speed and power factor also. So here if you see power consumed by induction motor is, P given, is given by P is equal to root 3 Vi cos pi. From that current can be calculated is in I is equal to Q divided by root 3 Vi cos pi. This is proportional to Q divided by cos pi. This means that current drawn is inversely proportional to cos pi. When cos pi decreases, I increases, the current drawn increases. So, because of a lower cos pi, the reactive power consumed by the induction motor will be large. So, for that, uh, needs, uh, for that, capacitor has to be connected across the induction motor. In industries, almost all the drives are used as, uh, used are induction motors. 
when they consume large number of reactive power it will create problem in the grid so they will ask you to put connect capacitor banks in your uh, substation so that is the reason whenever the consumer he asks for uh, induction motor he asks he gives high power factor specifications so that you need not to be connect you need not to connect the capacitor so it is good to design machine with high value of power factor so the if the value of flux density in the air gap the the value of flux density in the air gap should be small the value of flux density in air gap should be small otherwise the machine will draw large magnetizing current giving poor power factor so this can be understood using the vector diagram we will go to vector diagram see these are the vector diagram okay i think you remember these vector diagrams you have studied in in case of transformers can you recall okay because we know that transformers and induction motors both are analogous to each other do you accept this one if you recall the uh, what equivalent circuit diagram of transformer and equivalent circuit diagram of induction motor both are almost same in transformer there are two windings primary and secondary windings and connected through the magnetic core flux is connected through the magnetic core similarly in case of induction motor stator acts as a primary winding rotor acts as a secondary and in between air gap is there instead of core air gap through which flux is passing through air gap so both the circuit diagrams equivalent circuit diagrams are same so now this is the circuit di the uh, vector diagram drawn for the induction motor so now here when when you connect induction motor without load it draws some no load it draws some no load current so it consisting of no load consi current consisting of the magnetizing current im1 and loss component il1 if you add il1 and im1 you will get i0 1 okay now this is the ir1 is the secondary current that is rotor current if you transfer this rotor current in the primary side this will become ir ir1 dash ir1 dash so the current i not 1 and ir ir1 dash if you add you will get stator current is1 is1 okay so this stator current that is in the primary side that is stator current of the induction motor now you can see pi1 is the angle between vs and is1 which is the power factor which is the power factor here this is the angle this is the angle so now come to figure b here higher value of b average is selected higher values of b average is selected when you select high values of b average the magnetizing current is large magnetizing current is large and there is a little bit increasing loss component also then if you add this il2 and im2 you get no load current i02 again if you add ir2 dash this is ir2 okay transfer to the stator side this will become ir2 dash and this ir2 dash and i02 is added vectorially and this will give is2 okay this will give the stator current okay two represents the case second case where higher value of b average is used one represents for the lower value of b average is used what you can see here the angle between voltage and current this pi2 will be large so when pi2 is large then cos pi2 cos pi2 reduces cos pi2 reduces okay power factor reduces power factor reduces so now when you select higher values of b average the operating power factor will reduce okay now you can see here when vm increases flux increases and flux increases magnetizing current increases and angle between uh, this voltage and current pi2 increases and cos pi2 decreases so operating power factor is low if you select lower values of b, b average that is bm then flux will be less 
magnetizing current will be less pi 2 angle between uh, voltage and current will be less when pi 2 is less cos pi 2 will be more so operating power factor is high so whenever you want to have a good power factor then you should select lower values of B average that is the criteria okay secondly to reduce volume of machine choose the value of flux density in the air gap should be such that there is no saturation in the any part of the magnetic circuit. When you select the values of uh, BM, you should see that there should not be any saturation in the magnetic circuit. Now coming to iron losses. So if you see, select higher values of flux density, it will reduce, it will increase the iron losses and decreases the efficiency. So now here iron losses, we know that hysteresis losses given as Kh flux density V max into raised to 1.6 into F wax per meter cube. If flux density is large, it will increase the hysteresis loss. Again here if flux density is large, it increases the eddy current losses. When iron losses increases, the efficiency will decreases. The efficiency will decreases. So whenever the machine has been designed to ask the higher values of efficiency, we cannot go for higher values of B average. Coming to overload capacity. What do you mean by overload capacity? So machine usually rated in terms of output. So suppose consider a 10 kilowatt machine. If you load it 10 kilowatt load uh, with 10 kilowatt load, then loading is called 100%. If you load it uh, with 8 kilowatt, its loading is called 80%. So now this is the efficiency curve. You can see here this is the efficiency curve. Now here you can see efficiency will be uh, maximum in case of some from 70 to 80 percent. You can see here the efficiency here it is maximum. So always induction motor should be loaded with 70, 72. 80% of the load. Okay, so in some of the applications, what happens? So in in between intermittent loads will come. That is, overloads will come for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it may be for half an hour. Okay, for small period, say assume that sometimes additional load will come. In that process, the due to that process, load will increase 150, uh, 1.5 times or two times or sometimes it may be three times that will occur so in that what we have to do suppose 10 kilowatt machine earlier it is loaded with 8 kilowatt the its load is 80 percent okay now its uh, operating efficiency is very high so when load comes uh, 150 percent means 16 kilowatt or 20 kilowatt that time you need not to change the motor with 16 kilowatt or 20 kilowatt Okay, motor can withstand that overload for a few minutes. Okay, if you replace to, uh, to tackle with that overload with 20 kilowatt, what happens during 20 during that small period? Okay, uh, it will uh, it will be loaded with a higher uh, percentage, okay, 80 percent or something. But rest of the period, 20 kilowatt motor will be underloaded. Your load is only 8 kilowatt. If you install 20 kilowatt motor the percentage of loading will be 40 percent because of that the operating efficiency will be very less operating efficiency will be very less this that will be operating here somewhere here 30 percent or 40 percent here okay so now to avoid that one overloading is allowed see overloading 150 percent and uh, 200 percent that is allowed for half an hour 15 minutes that is uh, that is uh, allowed by the induction motor what happens whenever overload occurs more current will be drawn, more heat is generated. So, motor will not burn immediately if overloaded. It will take certain time. Okay. So, it will, uh, be, when you load it uh, more, more current is taken and uh, heat is generated. So, that is allowed for 15 minutes, 30 minutes as per the percentage of loading. So, if you load it continuously 200%, 300%, definitely motor will burn. More heat will be generated and insulation fail, motor will burn, that is not allowed. Overload is allowed for only 30 minutes, 
15 minutes or half an hour half one hour, this uh, some 10 minutes 5 minutes like that so that overload capacity of a motor should be very high so that is one that is one of the important feature of the induction motor now we'll see what is the impact of uh, b average on overload capacity so this is the a circle diagram of induction motor you can see here the diameter of a circle diagram you can see here it is given by vs divided by xs1 that is reactance that is xs1 is the reactance synchronous reactance okay so now this if reactance is less vs by xs this is large the diameter will be large if xs is more high value then diameter will be less so now if we select lower values of b average this will give higher values of excess excess when excess is large the diameter of the circle diagram will be less so now here the overload capacity is given by a ratio of mn by al mn by al okay mn by al now coming to higher value of b average so when you select high value of b average it will give lower values of excess lower value of excess so this vs by excess excess is less so the diameter of the circle diagram this will be large from that that ratio this is mn by al so the mn by al this will be large this will be large means overload capacity will be large so when you select high value of b average excess will be less and the diameter of the circle diagram will be large and overload capacity value will be more okay so we'll have a more overload capacity sometimes 200 percent 150 percent like that you can design sometimes customers he will ask in the specification overload capacity will be 200 percent for 15 minutes half an hour like that he will be asking so for that we have to design so here you can see that eph is this is the basic fundamental equation tph kws TPH is equal to EPH is equal to 4.45 M KWS. If BM decreases, okay. So now here, if BM decreases, okay, flux. This is flux, okay. Flux also decreases here. This, okay. Flux also decreases. So when this decreases, this pi M decreases. TPH increases. When TPH increases, excess synchronous reactance directly proportional to number of turns. Okay, number of turns. That is leakage reactance directly proportional to the number of turns. So now, when excess, when TPH, this TPH increases, excess will increase. Leakage reactance because this is part of uh, excess, so this will increase. Overload capacity decreases, and vice versa, and vice versa okay designing machine with good power factor with large overload capacity is conflicting understood designing machine with good power factor and at the same time with large overload capacity is conflicting because to have a machine with good power factor to have a machine with good power factor b average should be less b average should be less but in case of overload capacity if you select lower values of b average what happens excess will increase excess will increase and overload capacity decreases overload capacity decreases so at the same time to have a good power factor and go better overload capacity it is not possible okay so you have to compromise between these two a machine with a good power factor cannot have a better overload capacity a machine with low power factor can have a better overload capacity okay that you have to make compromise between these two so normal design b average is equal to 0.3 to 0.6 weber per meter square for machines used in cranes rolling means where large overload capacity is required a value of 0.65 over per meter square may be used. Okay, cranes are used for uh, intermittent uh, timing, intermittent uh, loads as a loads. Okay, it is continuously it is not used. In rolling, also some overload will appear in the 
for the intermediate period for small periods in that case uh, all machine has to design for better overload capacity for that higher value of uh, flux density is used instead of 0 0.6 0 0.65 can be used now coming to uh, choice uh, of ampere conductors per meter here you can select the value from 5000 to 45000 ampere conductor per meter okay if you select a large value of ac so it will lead to the large amount of copper and it will lead to the higher copper losses when losses increases efficiency decreases efficiency decreases at the same time because of losses there is an increase in there is an increase in temperature okay so high value of ac results in higher copper losses and increase in temperature rise so for that better cooling facilities has to be provided so coming to the voltage when you want to uh, select the value of ac you should see the what is the voltage you should see the what is the voltage rating of the machines usually voltage rating of the machine is 230 volt 440 1000 3000 3 volt 6600 volt etc okay now you can see here slot uh, slot in that windings are there insulations are there okay wedge lip these are the details of this one okay so now in this slot the space occupied by the conductor as well as insulation okay so now when you select uh, high values of ac see consider the tire motor the motor may be 230 volt or 1000 volt 6600 volt so if motors in most if for a motor having high voltage specification if motor input voltage is 6600 volt the insulation required in this slot is large more space is consumed by the insulation and space left for the conductors is very less so that is the reason you cannot go for high values of ac for high voltage machine for high voltage machine because for high voltage machine needs more insulation in the slot that is the reason okay so if voltage rating is less then you can go for high values of ac because less space is cons consumed by the insulation and more space is available for the conductors coming to overload capacity already discussed many times okay so now a large value of ac would result in large number of turns per phase this would mean that the leakage reactance of the machine becomes very high and diameter of the circle diagram is reduced resulting the reduced value of overload capacity this that is ac ampere conductors are increased when ampere conductors are increasing turns per phase also increasing turn per phase also more because of turns per phase this reactance excess is large excess is large this excess is nothing but 2 pi xl 2 pi f xl 2 pi f l okay 2 pi f l so l is the inductance so this this depends upon the number of turns if number of turns are more l is more the excess is large and overload capacity decreases because the, the diameter of the overload uh, the uh, circle diagram will reduce if excess is large and diameter will reduce the ratio mn by al will reduce overload capacity decreases and vice versa means if you select lower values of ac tf tph will be less and excess will be less excess will be less and overload capacity increases overload capacity increases okay Hence, the value of ampere conductors per meter depends upon the size of the motor and stator stator voltage type of anti voltage stator voltage, okay, and type of ventilation and overload capacity desired. Okay, so now the value of ampere conductor per meter depends upon the size of the motor and stator voltage type of ventilation. If you have a better ventilation then you can go for higher values of AC because whatever the heat extracted in these slots can be uh, better in case of better ventilation uh, facilities okay the various types of ventilation types of uh, ventilation methods are there okay and 
it also depends upon the overload capacity desired overload capacity desired by selecting the ampere conductors you should see the size of the motor stator voltage type of ventilation and overload capacity which is desired one usually the ac is selected in the range of 5000 to 45000 we coming to main dimensions for separating d and l so the product d square l will get the volume of the product d square l some value will get so how to separate d and l by selecting l by 2 ratio so l by 2 ratio is equal to 1.5 to 2 1.52 for minimum cost design and second l by 2 ratio is equal to 1.1 to 1.25 for good power factor if person is asking better power factor specification we have to select l by 2 from 1 to 1.25 and for if if customer is asking for better efficiency so l by 2 select should be selected 1.5 for good overall design l by 2 is should be equal to 1 for better power factor 2 is equal to root of 0.18 into l that has to be used once l by 2 if you use this value easily you can separate d and l diameter of the bore can be calculated and length of the core can be calculated peripheral peripheral speed of a machine for normal construction that v is equal to which is pi d n s should be less than 30 meter per second less than or equal to 30 meter per second for standard construction it may increase up to 60 meter per second for special rotor construction v a should be less than or equal to 75 per meter second and providing ventilating ducts if stator length is large suppose it is more than 100 to 120 100 mm to 125 mm. Then, for that, 8 to 10 mm one ventilating duct has to be provided for the distance of 100 to 125 mm core length. One ventilating duct has to be provided. So the ventilating ducts depends upon the total length of the core length. So these ventilating ducts are required for cooling purpose.